So to summarize everything that we have learned so far, uh, the bilateral filter applied to a pixel P in an image would give the resultant pixel value RP which is given by 1 over lambda P where this normalization factor is dependent on the pixel location as we discussed earlier times sum or all Q belonging to the neighborhood of pixel P G of norm of P minus Q parameterized by sigma s. So sigma s is a parameterization of the spatial domain times G of norm of I P minus I Q. parameterized by sigma c times i of q. So as we explained earlier, this is going to be vector in color in, in color images and these are going to be scalars in the grayscale images. So this is a photometric distance component, photometric distance and this is the spatial distance. So this part can be computed beforehand and this part has to be computed iteratively. Uh, as we iterate over all the pixel values and thus as we also discussed previously that uh, due to this dependence on the pixel values bilateral filter cannot be applied in the frequency domain but nonetheless there are efficient implementations. Uh, now uh, as you can see like uh, now one of the things is that when bilateral filter is applied iteratively over an image it will create images that are almost piecewise constant that is you will find that uh, most of the regions will become homogeneous and ultimately the image will start looking a cartoonish image. So in the previous lecture we understood all the mathematical uh, terms, terminologies and what are all the equations that are used in bilateral filter. Now here we will try to visualize everything graphically as to what happens as a result of this spatial distance and as a result of this photometric distance. So consider that we have an input image. So we'll draw, develop a graphical understanding. So assume we have an input image. Just trying to draw it approximately. So these are two different regions and so suddenly there is a jump in the image pixel values and over here we have pixels shown in red but with tremendous amount of noise. And at the bottom we have pixels shown in green again having tremendous amount of noise. And the sudden jump shows the sudden change in the pixel values. So this is going to be an edge. So this defines an edge in an image. Now spatial weights are going to look something like this. So this is a 3D plot with spatial weights. the weights that the spatial component of the bilateral filter will assign to the neighborhood pixels. So this is our 3D plot of the spatial weights.
So if we are using a regular Gaussian, then we'll just use these special weights for all the neighboring pixels around a pixel on which we are operating our Gaussian filter. But in bilateral filter, we are going to have two components the spatial weights and the and the weights as a result of the photometric distance. So we'll have what we call range weights. So the range weight are going to look like this. Again for the red region, So these are our range weights. So we are, let's suppose, applying the bilateral filter at this location, that is pixel that is on this side of the edge. So if we, if we compute the range weights over here, then for all the pixels that are in the red region, the weight is going to be higher for them. And since the green pixels are much farther away from these red pixels in the color space, so for any pixel in the green region relative to this pixel, the weight is going to be very low. So we see that there is a sudden low weight and due to noise, noise in the pixel values, we also are going to be have, having local noise in the weights. So now we multiply both these. So we take this and we multiply them together. So the effective weights that we get after multiplying is so on the on this side the pixels will get very low weight and on this side the pixels are going to be getting higher weight. So this Gaussian would be clipped by a plane and the resulting weights would look like so again I'm not an expert in drawing so pardon if there's anything wrong So on one side, the shape of the Gaussian is going to be preserved. Likewise on this side, preserved. And over here, we'll have flatter region. So the Gaussian is clipped. along this boundary. So the result of applying these weights over here to the neighboring pixels, the resulting image
will get will look like is going to be much more a smooth version as compared to original so the noise will be suppressed again if we apply uh, these assume that we have applied it iteratively to all the pixels in an image in a similar fashion so the result of after iteratively applying uh, the bilateral filter to each of these images so for Every pixel look and will have a different kind of uh, looking, uh, different kind of uh, weight patterns. And similarly, if we apply this filter to this region, uh, this will reverse. So we'll have a flatter region on the other side, and uh, the Gaussian looking region on this side. And this region will also become much more smooth. and we'll have the boundary preserved in the image or H. So this completes our discussion of the bilateral filter and we'll here again once again summarize the, the brute force implementation of the bilateral filter which we also discussed in the previous lecture but here we'll just write it for completeness. So if you apply the bilateral filter to Luxian I, I comma J, the resultant pixel value would be 1 over W I comma J times sum over R equal to negative of N minus 1 by 2 to N minus 1 by 2 C equal to negative of C group, so R comma C they both grow from negative n minus 1 to n minus 1 by 2 I of I plus R J plus C times G of norm of R C parameterized by sigma s so this is a special parameterization times g of norm of i of i comma j minus i of i plus r j plus c square parameterized by sigma c so sigma is a special is a color space parameterization. So this is a naive brute force implementation, and Wij is given by again sum or all R, sum or all C, G of norm of R C parameterized by sigma S times G of norm of I of I comma J minus I of I plus R J plus C parameterized by sigma C. So this is a naive brute force implementation of the bilateral filter. So this completes our discussion of bilateral filter. Again, you are going to have this brute force implementation as a part of your assignment and the research work that we shared earlier has much uh, optimized implementation and that covers our discussion of the bilateral filter and now next we will discuss Kovara filter.